continue with our study of linear programming. Um, so we uh, have done enough uh, conceptual and mathematical work to um, uh, uh, begin to approach uh, a very important topic, uh, which is called the simplex uh, method. Uh, this is um, uh, one of the universally used uh, methods uh, to solve uh, linear programming uh, uh, problems, uh, multivariable linear programming uh, problems. Uh, and the two domains where simplex method um, has been used um, it, although it is relatively recent, but it has been used um, uh, in resource allocation problems uh, and uh, scheduling. So, so long as a problem can be constrained uh, linearly, uh, then uh, the simplex method is, a, uh, is an excellent um, approach. Um, so, uh, the, the question becomes, um, uh, is, well, uh, why not use graphical uh, methods uh, that we developed uh, in a couple of previous screencasts about uh, linear programming? And, uh, well, uh, um, if you have two variable uh, problem, then uh, graphics uh, um, are okay. Uh, three variable problem, okay. But if you have more than three variables, uh, if you have n dimensional space where n is strictly greater than three, then it becomes problematic. So, because uh, geometry uh, gets involved, uh, get, becomes involved uh, too fast, uh, it just becomes uh, too complex. And uh, so uh, this is where uh, uh, the uh, we, we start. We start. Uh, this is where uh, we can use the simplex method. So enter uh, simplex method um, that uh, was developed um, in the uh, 1940s, 1950s. So this is a fairly recent uh, development uh, that um, became uh, very practical with the advent of fast digital computers because um, uh, linear programming. Uh, uses uh, matrix algebra to solve um, uh, problems with many, many variables. And in this screencast, we'll talk about several of the basic uh, concepts uh, that are very important uh, to linear programming. Uh, again, our treatment uh, follows the treatment uh, in a, a book by Maki and Thompson, uh, Finite Mathematics, uh, the fourth edition. You can Google it up. Uh, it's one, in my opinion, it's one of the best books on finite uh, finite math. Very well presented and uh, well motivated. Um, the treatment of various aspects where finite mathematics uh, can be used and is used. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, first concept is standard ma uh, maximization problem. Uh, the second one is uh, slack variables, slack and decision variables. And then the third concept is basic solution, which uh, we'll have to wait until the next uh, screencast. Um, all right. And, uh, okay, so let's um, uh, start uh, uh, um, uh, by contextualizing our discussion uh, in terms of a uh, problem. So an office manager must allocate the time of the office staff among auditing, uh, business accounting, and uh, taxes. Right. Uh, so uh, let's uh, x denote the number of hours per week uh, for auditing, uh, y is the number of hours per week uh, for business accounting, and then z is the number of hours per week uh, for uh, tax auditing. Right. Then uh, our objective is to uh, maximize this objective function for x plus 10y plus 6z. We're going to leave aside the question of where these functions come from. Well, presumably um, a smart mathematician or a business uh, uh, manager uh, constrained the problem to be such uh, that uh, this is the uh, uh, objective function. And we have a couple of uh, constraints, uh, right? Um, uh, x and y and z are non negative then 15x plus 20y plus 30z less than or equal to 4,800, 30x plus 60y plus 45z less than or equal to 10,800, and 6y plus 3z less than or equal to 1,800. So these are the uh, constraints, right? And the, 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 the constraints on the, uh, on the variables, right? Uh, in, mentioned in the uh, objective, uh, objective function. Okay, uh, so um, we uh, talked in one of the previous screencasts on uh, uh, linear programming, we talked about feasible, uh, feasible sets. 
Right. Uh, so in, in, in the simplex method, uh, feasible sets um, uh, are known as uh, feasible vectors, right? So one of the feasible vectors, this is just the values of the variables mentioned in the objective function, um, uh, can be for this problem, oh, we can just simply set x, y, and z to zero, and uh, uh, they all satisfy uh, the constraints, the four constraints. And uh, the value of the objective function, right, let's suppose that it measures our profit uh, is zero. So yes, we have a solution. It's not a particularly interesting solution because, uh, well, we do not have any profit, right, uh, for, for, for the value of our objective function. Well, but we can come up with another feasible vector by setting x, y, and z to be equal to 10. So in, in this case, uh, let's see if we satisfy uh, the other three constraints. Obviously, the first constraint um, is satisfied. So we have 150 plus uh, 200 plus 300, uh, and that is sure, uh, surely less than or equal to 4,800. Then, uh, so the first constraint is satisfied. Uh, and then the second constraint, uh, let's see if uh, uh, this feasible uh, vector satisfies the second constraint. Mm, uh, 300 plus uh, 600 plus 450 will be uh, less than or equal to uh, uh, 10,800. That is true. And uh, then the third constraint, oh, yes, it uh, it, it satisfies 60 plus 30 is less than or equal to 1800. Uh, so we're in uh, we're in good shape because this is a feasible vector in the sense that it satisfies the constraints of the um, uh, 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 of the problem, and then the objective function at that feasible vector uh, will be equal to 40 plus uh, 100 plus. Um, 600, uh, uh, 60 rather, and this will be 200. So yeah, it is. Uh, this this feasible vector is uh, uh, better. So we have we have two feasible vectors. And in general, um, uh, uh, the, the the simplex uh, 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 method uh, moves from one feasible vector to another feasible vector, and eventually, if the problem has a solution, it. Uh, uh, terminates uh, or converges to a feasible um, uh, vector that optimizes the uh, 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 the objective uh, uh, function. Well, either minimizes or maximizes them. We are um, uh, grounded our discussion in terms of uh, uh, maximization problems, but minimization problems are uh, symmetrical. So uh, let's uh, define what is a standard maximization problem. So. Um, uh, it, it, it's um, uh, we have because um, uh, uh, eventually we will develop uh, algorithm and then uh, actually implement it in uh, Java uh, for the uh, that that um, solves the problems linear program problem uh, problems by the simplex method. Um, so uh, if we have a linear programming problem, then uh, it is defined to be a standard uh, maximization problem if and only if. Uh, all uh, variables uh, are constrained to be non-negative. Um, so variables mentioned in the objective function, uh, just getting ahead ourselves uh, of the screencast, uh, uh, they're called decision uh, variables. So, um, so these are the variables that are constrained to be non-negative. So the decision variables are constrained to be uh, non-negative. And um, all of the uh, um, uh, other constraints other than the constraint on uh, decision variables and the non-negativity of decision variables. Um, uh, all other constraints must be uh, linear functions. Uh, so uh, they have to be of the form uh, a1 times x1 plus a2 uh, uh, times x2 plus uh, uh, let's say da 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 uh, a n uh, times x n uh, less than or equal to um, a positive number. Uh, so uh, to a positive number, uh, some, some positive number k, right? And typically they're all integers. Um, so, and then uh, uh, number three, uh, the objective function is also a linear function. Um, Objective function is also of the form a1x1, a2x2 plus 
da 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 a m x m all right so let's let me put the plus okay here so it has to be of this form okay uh, so that'd be maybe x1 x2 uh, x uh, n or xyz okay um so how do we decide if a linear programming um, a problem is a, a, a standard maximization problem well we simply have to uh, see if uh, it satisfies all of the constraints so these are uh, sample problems problem one problem two problem three uh, they're all uh, maximization problems um, so um, is uh, is this problem an SMP right standard max problem uh, okay um, so that's the question that we need to uh, answer because if it's not an SMP then our simplex method will simply leave the problem alone okay so um, this is a linear function uh, the non-negativity constraint is satisfied um, okay now uh, this is a um, uh, okay this uh, well, let's take a look at this uh, constraint okay um, minus x minus 5y plus uh, 3z uh, is uh, less than or equal to uh, minus 8 right so we just multiply it so that's a negative number so this is a no okay let's take a look uh, at the um, uh, sample uh, problem number two uh, and well the constraints look okay but um, the non-negativity constraint is not uh, uh, satisfied requirement is not satisfied because not all of the decision variables are constrained x3 and x4 uh, left out of the scope and then uh, problem number three uh, well that's uh, that's a uh, 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 that's an SMP uh, because all of the all of the constraints are mm, uh, satisfied because right? uh, uh, we can multiply each constraint by uh, minus one and uh, we get uh, non-negative uh, non-negative numbers on the right hand side of each uh, inequality okay so this is a uh, SMP okay so let's continue with the uh, slack variables okay um, so, um, all right, let's uh, ground our discussion um, in uh, this problem, okay? So uh, this is a standard maximization problem. Um, and um, uh, let's um, uh, see how we can satisfy uh, the first constraint. Let's rewrite it in terms of uh, uh, 20x plus uh, 4y plus 4z plus u some variable u equals uh, six uh, thousand right okay now let's take a look at this variable at this variable u right now um, we uh, can have uh, 2x plus 4y plus 4z either equal to six thousand or um, uh, by the constraint um, uh, it can be strictly less right either um, uh, equal to uh, 6,000 or less than 6,000. Now, if um, uh, this um, uh, uh, 20x plus 4y plus uh, uh, 4z, the first constraint, is equal exactly to 6,000, that, that means that u is equal to 0, right? And uh, if we have uh, 20x plus 4y plus 4z uh, 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 be uh, strictly less than 6,000, then uh, u uh, is going to be greater than 0, right? Oh, well, because we were, um, just just by by, by sheer uh, uh, just just uh, uh, that's just because of the nature of this inequality, right? So, u is um, uh, known as a slack variable, 
Okay, so what's a Slack variable? Um, uh, it, th th this is a variable uh, that denotes the amount of unused resources, right, in the first constraint. So we can um, rewrite constraints in terms of Slack variables. So the first constraint uh, can be rewritten as 20x plus 4y plus 4z plus u equal uh, equals 6,000. The second constraint um, can be rewritten as 8x plus 8y plus 4z plus, um, uh, let's say, v equals uh, uh, 10,000. And then uh, we can similarly rewrite the third constraint by adding another um, uh, slack variable. So in general, any uh, uh, set of constraints uh, can be rewritten by adding exactly one unique slack variable per constraint. Okay? And uh, so this is W, right? Uh, equals uh, equals four thousand. So these are uh, these are Slack uh, variables. They will um, uh, become very important to us uh, later on in our uh, discussion. And so then, just for the sake of completeness, mm, we uh, let's define uh, decision variables just to make sure that. Um, uh, we have all the definitions in place uh, before the next screencast where we're going to start developing the a notion of the basic solution and then uh, developing uh, will develop and implement a, sl a, a simplex method. So uh, the decision variables are the variables uh, explicitly used in the objective uh, function. Okay, so uh, just to recap, uh, if we have an SMP uh, problem Right, we can break it down uh, into decision variables and uh, uh, slack variables, and um, uh, the decision variables um, uh, those give us quantities that are used to uh, maximize, right, in this context or in other contexts, minimize uh, objective function. Let's say profit, for example, right. Mm, and the slack variables, um, uh, the semantics of slack variables, are those are the quantities that uh, uh, determine the amount of unused resources, whatever those resources uh, can be, right? Uh, fertilizers, for example, right? And uh, sometimes we're interested in maximizing the objective function and minimizing the amount of unused resources, or it can be vice versa. We want to be interested in, maybe interested in. Uh, the uh, maximization of uh, unused resources uh, and couldn't care less about uh, the objective function. So it, it really depends on the context. Uh, so, so because sometimes you are interested in uh, preserving as many resources as possible and uh, you don't really uh, care about your current, uh, your current profit. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching this and we will continue uh, in the next screencast with the Simplex Method and Basic Solutions.